Podcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello everyone and welcome to AfterBuzz TV's The Voice Of. I am Koortake and I am here with Dave Fanoy, a very, 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 very talented voice actor. Wow, thank you. Yes, well, you know, you've been doing it for years and years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> hey, mood. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. So, uh, tell everyone where they might know you from. Well, uh, if you watched Hulu in the last seven years, you heard me saying the following program is brought to you with limited commercial interruption by... That was um, you. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> In front of everything you watched. Um, uh, but uh, I'm, a lot of, I'm on a lot of commercials. Mm-hmm. I'm on some documentaries. And I'm on a lot of video games. And uh, the one that I've gotten the most notoriety for is uh, The Walking Dead game as Lee Everett. Yes. Taking care of little Clementine. Oh, my gosh. We miss you so much. We really, really well, you do. you know... <laughs> Maybe it was a dream sequence, and and Lee will come back, or or maybe she missed, and and well, I, I mean, wishful let's, thinking. Let's let's talk about The Walking Dead for a little bit, okay. because obviously, you know, huge fans of Telltale Games in general, as well as The Walking Dead. You did a phenomenal job as Lee Everett, Thank and you. it was really sad to see him go. Did you play the game? Uh, you know. Uh <clears throat> <laughs> oh. I'm not a gamer. You're not? Really? Sorry. Whoa. I, uh, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not a gamer. But do you, I mean, tell, tell us. Now, like, what I have done is done uh, uh, playthroughs and watched other people playing mm-hmm. through a lot of the games that I'm on. Uh, but I suck so bad as a gamer that I just... Eh. Oh, you can't possibly suck at Telltale. It's really just like interactive well, entertainment. You know what? That's true. That's true. Uh, and I think that was part of the popularity of the game is that you you didn't have to... It wasn't like Mortal Kombat and you have to yeah. know all the strokes and be so fast and this, that, and the other. It's, it's really making decisions about life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's why it touched so many people. Yeah. And uh, how important do you think those choices really were when you play a Telltale game? I think they're very important, uh, but they don't determine everything, kind of like life. Right. Uh, you make the best choices you can. Sometimes you're you're not sure what that best choice is. Mm-hmm. You go with your gut. Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but at the end, we all going to die, so. <laughs> <laughs> like Lee did. Like Lee did. Um, when did you find out that Lee was actually not going to make it? <laughs> I think we were in episode three. At the uh-huh. end, and um, I wasn't very happy. Of course. Uh, for selfish reasons, I really liked playing that character. He was a hero. He was taking care of this little girl. I, uh, I had grown to like this guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, when when uh, Sean Vanneman, uh, the head writer, told me, well, you know, we're going to kill Lee. He's going <laughs> to get bit in the next episode, and at the end of, of, of uh, episode five, it's over. And I was like, but, 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 no! Uh, but you did come back in season two. Well, the dream sequence. You know what, honestly? It was the Obi-Wan Kenobiification. It was great, because I honestly thought it was real, and they just blew our minds and brought you back and I was like, I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this happening. (laughs) Well, you know, I've got a lot of correspondence from fans, uh, many of whom uh, are saying, look, tell Telltale Games that it was a dream sequence. Uh, She missed and and you came back or you're half zombie, half human. Uh, I mean, people want to see this character come back and come back and come back. I'd even love to see the character come back. I just don't know how they could possibly do it yeah and the worst thing they could do would uh be in season three you see um zombie Mm -hmm. walker uh lee everett oh don't do that 
That would be terrible. <laughs> that would be terrible. And she'd have to kill him again. <laughs> so they, they are really working on uh, the season three Well, right you know now. what? Um, they didn't call me to Aww. say. But the game has been so popular, I cannot imagine that they're not working on season three. Oh, I heard, but I, obviously I'm just a web, web person and I'm not in the inside that via Comic-Con they said they were going to do a season three. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't be, I, I'd be surprised if they didn't. Yeah. That's what I would be surprised at. If they didn't, uh, so that, that would be nice. Yeah. And maybe I'll have another dream sequence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I was all for it. I, was, I couldn't believe that Lee was gone, you know, because Clementine really needs her Lee. <laughs> yeah. Well... She's got him. You know, it's like when somebody that's been important to you passes, mm -hmm. they're still with you in your heart. And uh, if you remember the teachings, if you remember the, the good things uh, they taught you, then they really are still there. And how, how would you describe Lee? And like, Lee was a guy who, uh, he was a regular guy. He'd been a college professor. His uh, wife was cheating on him. Mm -hmm. He discovered it, killed her and loved her and uh, was paying the price by going to prison. And he was at the point of thinking his life was over, uh, and he was a failure as a human being. And then the zombie apocalypse happens, and this horrible thing frees him and gives him an opportunity to redeem himself when he discovers this little girl whose parents mm -hmm. had left town, and she's all alone. Kind of like a second chance. A second chance, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So you don't play games much, but do you read comics or...? I have read comics and graphic novels. Yes. Um, and, I, I, you know, I, I love the gaming industry. I don't want anybody to think, oh, God, this guy's not interested in games. I, <laughs> as a matter of fact... Um, I think the gaming industry is the most important entertainment uh, sector. Right on. When you think about it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for thousands of years, mm -hmm. if you wanted to entertain yourself, you went to a play, you went to the movies, you watched TV, you went someplace or sat down and, and just experienced. Right. Well, with games, especially games like Telltale Games, The Last of Us, uh, these more narrative games, you're being entertained but you're also making decisions about how yeah. the entertainment goes and that's never happened in mm. human history before it's huge this is huge mm. I, I don't think most people realize what a tremendous shift in human evolution and entertainment this is and games are looking more and more realistic as they're well. They're looking more and more realistic, and they're making more money than movies and music combined. Never mm -hmm. been a movie made a billion dollars in a day. We had three of them in the last 12 months. Well, what, do you, what do you think, actually, I was going to ask you this, about all these games and this, suddenly there's a surge of live-action movies that are trying to be adapted from video games. Do you think that's a great idea? Well, I, th I think it was inevitable. It's a great idea if they do a good job yeah. uh, with the screenplay and the directing and the acting. That's the tricky part. Though. That's the tricky part. Um, I seem to recall a Mortal Kombat that came out a few years ago that was kind of stinky. Which one? The first one the was great. Oh, well. Well, I thought it was great, okay. but I mean, I could yes, be the minority. Yes, but you were just a child. <laughs> <laughs> hey, childs have opinions. <laughs> true, they true. But have you ever, you know, at, at your ripe old age of whatever you are now, have you ever looked back at the shows you liked when you were really little and gone, damn. I like that. Yes, but then the nostalgia still, kicks in. Yeah, but, but it still has it still has a place in your heart. I yeah. I, I look at back at, at cartoons and whatnot I used to watch as a kid, and some of them suck. But because I loved them, yep. I still love them. One of them is uh, Masters of the Universe, that movie. Okay, see, there you go. Yeah, so yeah. I totally so I I still see. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and I'm a I'm a big fan of that genre of movies like Conan, the sword and sorcery mm -hmm. stuff. But all too often they just don't do it right. They don't they don't take it seriously enough. Do you have any like opinions on like how maybe they can make it right? <laughs> well, after observing all these movies. Um. Well, you you know the money's got to be on the screen. Yeah. The costumes have to be right. The actors have to be good actors and committed to the part. And the story has uh, to be good, and too. And the story has to be good. And all too often, uh, they're scrimping and saving on something and not good actors, not good story, not good costuming. And, and those are the things that take you out of it. You know, you uh, 
show I know you love, I love Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Yes. Great acting, mm-hmm. great story, costuming right, sets fabulous. It can't miss because every attention to t- detail is there. Yeah. Uh, and I think all too often that just doesn't happen. Yeah. I, it's true. Sometimes they, they depend on the notoriety of the yes. video game to make yes. it rise. And sometimes it just doesn't It's work. like those buddy films. That, I know. Let's get this guy and this guy. Put them in a film. Who cares about yeah. this script? They're big stars. Everybody will watch. We'll make a ton of money. Come so on. Let's, let's kind of hop on that. Um, so what do you think of all these... You know, celebrities who have notoriety and great success as a celebrity kind of, I wouldn't say stealing, but taking over voice acting jobs because of their notoriety. Um, like Rihanna and J-Lo doing that movie Home. They had no well, experience. You know, I, I have two reactions to it. My initial reaction was uh, not pleasant. <laughs> um, I didn't like it. And I there's a part of me that still doesn't like it because uh, I'm not on those movies. Sure. But... Uh, the other side, of those movies wouldn't get made if they didn't have major stars signed. Now, if they start hiring me for some of those other parts, yeah. then, you know, maybe we'll be okay with that. Uh, but you're, you're from the underground where, like, the true talent lives. You know, you were once a DJ way back when. <laughs> oh, come on. When I, was, when I was growing up, we always wanted to find the underground and know it was really cool. Well, you know... Um, <laughs> You, you, the underground is cool, but you know you got to make a living too. <laughs> that's that's yes, that's true. And uh, you know I I've done some uh, cartoons that are fairly well known. I've uh, was Sonic, ca- right? Sonic the Hedgehog. Was I great. was Commander <laughs> Kellogg and and uh, um, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, the, the spy. Uh, I don't remember. I, I can't know. I can't remember anything. <laughs> because you've done uh, so Star many Wars, things. Star Wars, the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Archer. That was one of them. Oh, Archer. Yeah. Yes. Actually, I read that as well. Uh, Star Wars, Clone Wars. I was General Pong Krell. Um, I'm in a new cartoon that should be coming out this year, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, sweet. Who are you? Well, if you, did you see the movie? Of I course did. you did. Of course I saw now, the see, movie. And that was a good movie. Yes. That was, they did it right. Um, you remember the part, uh, I'm a bad guy, Korath is the okay. character. Yeah. Uh, Jaiman Hansu uh-huh. played him in the movie. Oh, okay. Oh. So I'm... I'm Jaiman Hansu. Oh, sweet. That's cool. That that must have been fun. Oh, it's a gas. Yeah. It's still a gas. Yeah. Because it's still going on. <laughs> so I know you do a lot of, um, aside from voice acting, you also do, you know, acting. Acting. Um, which one is more pleasurable for you? Well, you know, um, if I had to live on the money I've made uh, being on camera, I'd be dead. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, you know, I really came to L.A. to be a voice actor. Right. Uh, I, they, they, on-camera stuff that has come my way, most of it has kind of been incidental. I haven't spent a lot of time seeking it out, although some of it has come my way. Uh, so I would have to say my favorite thing in the world is voice acting. So how did you end up voice acting? Because I know you were a DJ back up in the Bay Area for yeah. a while. Um, what triggered the, you know what, I want to be a voice actor. Well, one day I was in the parking lot and a buddy of mine, another guy in the air, uh, was leaving the station, and I said, hey, man, where are you going? He said, well, I'm going over to the city. We were in Berkeley mm-hmm. to do some voiceover. I said, voiceover? You know, voicing some commercials. I went, oh. He says, yeah, I make more money at that than I do on the air. Oh. And a little bell went off. And I went, <laughs> money. Oh. And at that time, I kind of felt like, oh, this is a forest for the trees kind of career. It's so omnipresent, I didn't even see it there. Mm. And I started taking some classes a couple of years. I didn't do anything about it for a couple of years. A couple of years later, I started taking some classes and knocking on the doors um, and, you know, starting to work my way up. Uh, the 976 numbers, this is uh, uh, the late 80s, the 976 mm-hmm. numbers were going. I was the voice on uh, a company called Megaphone. I was the voice of the Michael Jackson and Prince Hotlines. That's so cool. There was also a, a romance line. Oh. And women would call, and I'm telling them this story about, you know, I'm saving them. And this It's pre-recorded, Wait, of course. Oh, I felt like you were giving them love advice or something. Like, no, love. No, You're no, like a no. doctor love, but too. But I did, on the radio, I did do a show called Love Lines. That's cool. And uh, where I, I did give people love advice. Um, and uh, so I was doing that. I was the voice of, of uh, the concerts for Marine World Africa USA up there. 
And uh, but I wanted to work all the time. I, I, I had made up my mind that once I'm making the same amount of money doing voiceover as I am on the radio, I'm quitting the radio and I'm doing voice. Well, um, the radio station fired the whole staff, oh. including me, one day. And uh, I decided, well, you know what? I'm going to L.A. I had taken a class a few months before, a uh, weekend workshop with uh, a woman named Lee Gilbert, who mm-hmm. was an agent at Sutton Barth and Venari mm-hmm. uh, here in L.A. And at the end of it, she said, you know, you're really talented. If you ever decide to come to L.A., we'd love to represent you. I didn't realize how lucky I was at the time. Really? Uh, so when I got fired, called her up. Were you serious? She said, yeah, put a new tape together. Come on down. So I uh, spent a couple months putting a tape together in May 1990. I was headed to L.A. Now, I was married, uh-huh. had a daughter, wife, so I would drive down on Sunday night or Monday morning and drive back oh on gosh. Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. That drive. Yeah, that drive. Well, and I you know, I stayed for a month. I had an uncle down here. I stayed on his couch for a month. I had a buddy from high school. stayed on his couch for a month and uh, got a little cheap, funky apartment mm-hmm. that I shared <laughs> with another guy that was trying to uh, do the same thing. Um, you know, I uh, sacrificed. Right, of sacrificed. course. Well, and it's a challenging, and you got to do that it's to cha- make it. Even before I came down, mm-hmm. my buddy from high school, he was uh, the cartoon director of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, that's cartoon. so cool. And he, when, when we were in high school, he was drawing cartoons. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, me too. People lo- know that. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, he's. I had gotten in touch with him and told him what I wanted to do. He said, well, you know, put together a little demo tape of some cartoon stuff and send it to me, and I'll see what I can do. So I was still at the radio station at the time, and I put this tape together, Zoltan the Warrior, and I played Zoltan, I played the sidekick, I played the bad guy, I played the bad guy, uh-huh. heavy, and all the little parts, and I had the sound of boom, 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 boom. I had the whole little battle, the whole thing. thing lasted two minutes, and I sent it down to him, and he calls me back about a week later and goes, whew. Man, I'm glad this was good because oh. the only reason I t- said to do that is because we go way back. Yeah. And uh, so I started getting auditions nice. uh, in L.A., but I'm still living up there. I Traveling. would drive and mm. get an audition. Oh, you got an audition, 1 o'clock. Back time, I needed six hours. I would leave in time. Get in my little Toyota MR2 yes. and drive down yes. to five, get to the studio, do my audition, five minutes, take a deep breath, get back in the car and drive oh, back home. Oh my goodness. I did that three times. Guess how many of them I booked? Three. None. No. But I was in the game. Yeah. I was you in gotta the game. Keep, you got to yeah. keep on tracking. When you're in the game, that's, that's your job in voiceover really is to audition and... Uh, if you're good, you're going to book. Do you have any advice for people who are aspiring, you know, actors, voice actors, people who want to get into you know, this entertainment uh, industry? Study. Yeah. Study. Take it seriously. Um, it, it increase your, your network of fellow voice actors. Uh, you know, it's a very lonely business. <laughs> uh, lonelier now than it used to be. It used to be you, you ran into your friends at your agent's office or at the studios. Well, now we all have home studios. Sure. So it's even more lonely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you need a network of support. Hopefully your spouse uh, or significant other understands and uh, uh, will support you. Uh, but get training. Meet the people. You know, you need to network. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are living in a DIY world now. Yep. Uh, do it yourself. So uh, work at it every day. When did you know? What was the role that made you think, I have made it? Oh, well, I, I always thought I had made it. <laughs> um, I, uh, I found success fairly, fairly early uh, once I'd come to L.A., um, within a few months, I was on a cartoon series. Of course, it was the new kids on the block cartoon series, but uh, I was playing their manager, Dick Scott. That's cool. And, and on the radio, I'd hated new kids on the block. Uh, but, really? Oh, yeah. You know, I was, because, you know, I was, I new kids on the block. I love new kids on the block. But you were a girl. You, you were a little girl back there. You know, <laughs> you, you didn't understand they were fabricated. They weren't real. They're <laughs> real. Even now, they're, they're real. real. They're real. They're real. <laughs> no, I, and actually, they're cool. They're doing, doing all right, and they're back. Yeah, um, they are. But, uh... 
I was in the New Kids on the Block cartoon and and uh, a couple other things. Uh, Captain Planet did mm. some episodes there. Rugrats and a few other things. Uh, you did plus, a lot of high profile voice acting. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was also doing promos for ABC and uh, CBS. Was doing daytime soap opera promos for CBS. A lot of different things for ABC. Um, I became a voice, uh, one of the promo voices for the WB mm -hmm. when there was a WB. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of let me know, okay, you you're you're doing well. And you know how to do this. And uh, but you know, since then, yeah, there have been ups and downs, but I've always stayed in the game. Right. Okay. So I also know you went to go visit the Middle East with um, Adam Harrington oh, recently. Yes. Doha. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit because I'm sure the experience of meeting um, gamers from a completely different side of the world was interesting. Well, you know, uh, I wasn't completely surprised because I get fan mail. From all over the world, I, I had Russian kids, Polish kids, South American That's kids. That's so cool. Uh, that will they generally don't find me; they find my agent, uh -huh. and I'll get these letters or emails that are, get forwarded to me. Uh, can you please sign a picture for me oh. and send it to me? Uh, which I, I always do. It might take me a couple of weeks, <laughs> but uh, I always do. But I was surprised that when I went to Doha, there are all these. Kids mm -hmm. who are big gaming fans, and uh, you you just don't think of a Muslim country in the Middle East that they have any fun or do anything. Sure, you know, but <laughs> but they're yeah. having fun and doing stuff. Good, I'm and, glad to uh, hear that. Um, you know, I I met a couple of young ladies. I was I think I was most impressed with these two young ladies. They were uh, teenagers, and they were in their you know head to toe outfit. Uh, I want to call it a burqa, but that's not what it's called. <laughs> no. uh, you know, the faces are showing, and obviously their daddies had some money because they got to sit in the VIP section with the actors. And I went over and talked to them. I said, so what are you guys planning to do? And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, well, you're going to get married when you come of age and walk behind your husband for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And the first one said, oh, I'm going to go to American University and study politics. I'm going to come home and get involved in politics here. Yeah. And the other one, oh, wow. I'm not sure yet, but I think I'm going to go to medical school and be a doctor. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it let me know we all have uh, preconceived notions mm -hmm. about people. I saw a couple... Uh, Arab guy, we're at breakfast, uh, and Arab guy comes in, and he's dressed kind of hip-hop, which I thought, oh, okay, cool guy. Okay. And his wife is walking behind him, and she's head-to-toe in the black burqa. And uh, I, my thought was, oh, man, it's just a shame. You know, he's doing his thing, and she's got to walk behind him. And they didn't look like they were happy or anything. A little while later, I uh, step off the elevator, and they're... Or I was going to the elevator, and they step off, uh -huh. and she's holding his arm, and they're laughing, and they're joking, and they're having a great time. And it let me know it was just one of those times at breakfast when, you know, I'm not paying attention to you. I'm looking at the food, and mm. you know, maybe not smiling, but really it was just a, a snapshot that really didn't tell what their relationship yeah. was all about. One more thing on that. They... Uh, we were driving through, we saw McDonald's, mm -hmm. and we saw, you know, Coke cans uh, with Coke written in, in Arabic, uh, and we drove past uh, Victoria's Secret, and I'm saying, Victoria's Secret? Huh. What are you doing with Victoria's Secret? <laughs> and uh, there was a Western woman with us, and she says, oh, no, you don't understand. Up underneath those burkas? No way. They're wearing the bomb lingerie. That's cool. And That's cool. one night, uh, we are about to go out, and there were a bunch of Arab women traditional dress. They're wearing the black burkas, always black, mm -hmm. but these burkas were nicer material and there were designs in the material. Oh, hey. And when you looked a little closer, their makeup was on point. The eyelashes done, the nice. lipstick, uh, uh, the rings and the, you know, the, the jewelry. And as you look down at the shoes, six inch heels, Oh my gosh! They were styling the way they style. I can't. I can't even wear six-inch heels. Yeah, Don't well, forget that. I that's cool. Know. Yeah, that's, it was cool. That's really nice that you had that experience. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I hope to have it again. We've uh, Adam and I have made some good contacts over there, so uh, I think we'll be invited back. I think so. You guys are very friendly people. Good people's. Um, any cons that you can tell us that you got? You're going to be going to in the past couple next um, months. We're going to be going to Orlando. Uh, I forget what the name of the con is. It might be Orlando Con. Uh, the end of May. Okay. Last weekend in May. 
Have you ever seen anyone dressed in a cosplay as, you know, Lee Everett you know, or Bluebeard? You know what? Or... I never have. Oh, come on, so guys. So I'm putting it out there to you. <laughs> come on, y'all. You got to start going to the cons, cosplaying Lee Everett. You love the character. Or What's Beard. up? <laughs> right? Yeah, or Bluebeard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how did you feel when or you... Or Vulgen. Yes. Or, uh, or Gabriel Tosh. Or your uh, your other Telltale character, Tales from the Borderlands. Your... Oh, oh. Uh, the, the, that Finch? thug. That I, yeah, Finch. I, yeah, I haven't gotten that far yet, but I know you play him. Yeah, yeah. So now you're pretty much officially part of the Telltale family, I would pretty much say, right? <laughs> Uh, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I would think so. You, you know, your your voice keeps coming back. So, is, is there anything you like to say, like a shout out about Telltale, like just being part of that unique family? Well, you, you know what? Um, the first few minutes, the first twenty minutes of recording uh, Lee Everett, I knew something was different. I knew something Aww. was special. I didn't know how good it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be good. Uh, and I would just like to continue to pat telltale on the back for having made the commitment to narrative stories mm -hmm. years before they finally, you know, all, all the, the stars aligned mm -hmm. for the Walking Dead game. They, yeah. They've been at this. They've been trying to do this. Take it back. They've been doing this mm -hmm. for a long time, but it all came together on the Walking Dead game, and they're continuing to do that, and I pat them on the back and, yeah. and applaud them for that. They actually, um, it was just announced a couple hours ago that, I don't know if you know, but Marvel, they're actually going to do a Marvel ga video game in, coming out in 2017, I think, on PC and consoles. So I'm really excited to see how that's uh, going to happen. Well, you know, it's interesting because the console thing, I think, is on its way out. You think so? Yes. Huh. I think uh, within a few years, everything's going to be a download. Really? Yeah. You know, that's funny because I like that physical copy, so I always tend to try to go out and buy it because I like having that shelf with games. Yeah. So. But when you finally do have children, they can say, God, Mom, you're so old school. You, you like that physical copy. We just, you know, we just download it from the Internet and stream it there. I mean, it took me a long time to adjust to the fact that my phone has everything I need on it, like a camera and a wallet. Now you can pay money with yeah, your Yeah, so you're older than you think you are. It's no, supposed I, I to be people old. my age. And, I don't know how, how, what's wrong with these phones? They do everything. How come all the kids are walking around like this? Hey, yeah. you, you learned how to use Waze. That's, that's a little ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually am very excited by the technology and where we are and what we're doing. We are talking a little bit before we started that in a few years, uh, cars are going to drive themselves. Yeah. You're going to punch in the... Uh, and So <laughs> texting and driving won't be a problem. Uh, and I think because there's a generation of people who grew up texting mm -hmm. and, and with their heads in their phones, uh, they're going to adapt to that self-driving car very quickly. And already, um, Tesla's got a car. They say yeah. they've, uh, they've set it up so you can drive from... Uh, Northern California to That's Seattle. That's crazy. Uh, with, Just get a teleporter already. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't, I'm going to let them scramble somebody else's cells I know. before they scramble mine. I've actually <laughs> wondered that. If there was two teleporters and you enter one and then you it breaks your body and you come back in a different, like, they reform your body. Well, you Are you what? the same person? If it's uh, somebody conceived it. Yeah. And they showed it to us on television. Yeah, I mean, it was fantasy. But I wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the not-too-distant future, probably sooner than we think, they are able to do things like that. Mm -hmm. If not us, if not living objects. organic material, oh, I need to send this cup someplace. They all already kind of sort of do that with the 3D printers. Yeah, the 3D printers are amazing. And they are actually printing even mm -hmm. biological material now. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, 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 it's great. It, it's a wonderful world we're living in. And actually, those three printers actually save a lot of um, disabilities. Yes. So I, I, I'm just so gung ho about that. I'm so yeah. impressed. Um, the world is changing faster than. Uh, I can't. Keep we up. can keep up with it. Nope. Yeah. You got to run as fast as you can, not fall <laughs> too far behind. No way. But are there any other hobbies that you like to do aside from? I play tennis and oh. backgammon. Are they similar? I no, don't know. not at all. Okay, not they're like, you stupid girl. <laughs> my, my father was a tennis player and taught me to play tennis when I was a kid, but I was much more interested then in football and track and uh, picked it up again after I grew up. So uh, now I, I play a lot of tennis. Uh, 
some singles and some doubles, and I'm not a great player, mm-hmm. but I play well enough that I have a real good time. I can keep the ball in play, and I can I can hit an ace on you. Okay, I'm um, like, what is that? Sure, you know. Oh, I was such a girl. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> and uh, back in the the. 70s when I was I was real young. Uh, I played some backgammon, and then just in the last few years, I picked it up again and uh, play a lot of backgammon, and and uh, I enjoy it because it's like life. Yeah, it's skill and luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you have those hobbies. Everyone needs a hobby. I think it's so important just to get your mind out. Um, so I want to go back a little bit to that the, the Marvel announcement with Telltale. Oh yeah. If you were asked to play a Marvel superhero, who would you be? Oh, wow. Um, I'm sure you have a favorite. Well, you know, Nick Fury is... Not, that not that would be fitting. That, that, and actually, I, I've played Nick Fury. Um, oh, you have? I, I've played Nick Fury. I'd love to play him again. Um, I would be happy to play... Somebody asked me this question not too long ago, and I, I would love to play uh, one of those iconic characters on uh, a Marvel game, but Lee Everett has become an iconic character. Absolutely. And it wasn't a character that existed before the Walking Dead game came Mm -hmm. out. I would really love to play the next iconic character that we don't know about now. So someone new. Someone new that becomes iconic. What kind of superpower would you like to have? Oh boy. Oh boy! I, everything. That's, that's, that you know, and I hate those questions. <laughs> well, if you could fly or be invisible, which would it be? And um, I mean, I would be invisible. Invisible would be cool. Yeah. But do you do your clothes go invisible with you? Or? I, I, I mean, it's okay to be naked all the time, right? Might well, as well. Maybe be cold. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> It'd be kind of cold. <laughs> and and you know, if your invisibility thing just you know shuts down right quick, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the invisibility thing, reading people's minds, but then, you that's, know. That's dangerous. It's dangerous because then you're with, you know, the person you love or, you know, somebody else, some other friend. You, That's what you think about Yeah, me? right. You're like, I don't know if I want to know. my feelings with your thoughts, man. Sometimes when they say it out loud, you're like, oh, man, I did not want to hear that. So yeah, I, it, I would stay it. away from that. So uh, reading people's minds, mm, probably not. Uh, being super fast would be super strong, uh, super smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, that elastic thing is kind of cool. Oh, it's a str- <laughs> you have a lot of ideas. <laughs> well, hey, these, like aren't, these aren't new ideas. These are straight out of comic books. I like, the st- the, but the stretch thing can only go so far, you know. Well, I don't know. It depends how long you stretch for it. When you're like, oh, I keep going. I don't even know where I'm going. Yeah, anymore. there you go. Um, do you enjoy being a villain or the good guy when you voice? Well, you know, um, Lee Everett was a good guy, and I really, really enjoyed playing him. Mm-hmm. But more, but part of the reason I enjoyed playing him so much as a good guy was he wasn't the typical good guy. He was an everyday man that uh, had to overcome these crazy circumstances to take care of this little girl. Usually when we think of a good guy, he's flying around, he's super strong, sure. super smart, super something. Um so, love to play a good guy, but the villains are always much more interesting. Would you say Bluebeard's a villain? Oh, yes. Because oh, anybody, mean... anybody that's willing to cut you up to get an answer out of you is a villain. I don't, you know, he happens to be a rich villain. He happens to be one of those people who has so much money. That he believes that whatever I do is just fine. <laughs> I mean, he could have been a utilitarian for all I know. You know, he's an interesting character as well. He is an interesting character. I, I really enjoy playing Be- Bluebeard. Any any word on the possibility of a Wolf Among Us season two? Uh, I've heard it both ways. You know, yeah. right now it's just a rumor. Uh, I think the fans would love to see uh, a Wolf Among Us season two. Uh, whether Telltale will uh, bring us a season two. I feel like Telltale loves to make the fans happy, so hopefully they will. We would love to see that. Fingers crossed. And bring back Lee somehow, you know. (laughs) Um, Let's see. So you've been in the business for a really, really long time. Well... That you know, it's all relative. Uh, 20, really. Twenty-five years is that a long time? I think that's is a that long a really, time. Really long that, time? That, that that means that you've got a lot of experience. Yeah. Um, is there anything that was particularly challenging for you? 
Well, you know, staying in the business that long is challenging. Yeah. Um, just because you work doesn't mean you're going to work. Uh, I know people who were in the business when I got in that aren't now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's not always because they like talent. Um, sometimes it's uh, an attitudinal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the business has changed. When I started, uh, you needed an agent, you needed to be in L.A., uh, and you went to work at studios, you waited for a call from your agent for everything. Uh, now we all have studios at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may not see your agent for months at a time. Yeah. Uh, it's it It's very different and there's also pay to play sites so uh you could have a career without an agent you're not going to get paid very well but Mm -hmm. um there are lots of different ways to get into this business now that weren't available uh when i started uh there's also lots more work a lot of a wider variety audio books uh telephony internet uh, uh, the internet has opened Mm up everything so the world has changed and there are Guys I know who uh, didn't accept the change as well. And, uh, you know, change is a juggernaut you can't do anything about. Sure. Either get on board or get left behind. Mm-hmm. So you think you've been dealing with that pretty well, I'm, I'm guessing. Well, you know what? I try, to, I try to keep up. And, you know, sometimes when your head is down and you're, you're working hard, uh, you don't look up and see what's going on mm-hmm. with the, what the changes that are coming your way. Um, Fortunately, I have good friends, and I'm curious enough that every now and then I lift my head up and go, oh, I need a YouTube channel. (laughs) Oh, I need a Twitter account. You don't have a YouTube channel? I do. Okay. (laughs) I'm sure you... No, no, I'm I'm just saying that a lot of people will uh, fight those things that are now tools mm-hmm. in the business. I was guilty of that. Also, I was, you know, really trepidatious to have a Twitter account, have an Instagram, and now I'm all over it. I even yeah. feel bad doing Facebook, but I'm like, you know what? This is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, y- you want to keep up as much as you can. Um, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, new technology doesn't make sense to you mm-hmm. at first, and then as you watch all the other people running past you using it, and you, you suddenly... Oh, I see how it works yeah. now, and, and then you can jump on board. So let's let's talk a little bit about technology and the internet because the internet is just basically everything nowadays. How um, do you think is the fu- what do you think is the future of entertainment media? Do you think it's television? Do you think internet's going to take over streaming? Like this is well, so many different outlets. Uh, I think the internet is is the future for media in general. Mm-hmm. In terms of uh, entertainment types, I think video games are going to continue to uh, dominate. Good answer. <laughs> despite, the, despite the fact that most people in the broadcast media, the only time they talk about video games is when one kid comes with a gun and shoots a bunch of other kids. Hey, he's watching those. I hate when they games. do that. He's playing those games. God dang it. I, it's so tragic. It, well, and it's so stupid. Uh, it is. Thank you. Uh, but this is the biggest entertainment industry in the world, and it's only getting bigger. Yeah, so deal with it. Yeah. So, uh, what is the work that you are most proud of? Uh, I'm proud of a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> Lee Everett at, uh, in the Walking Dead game, uh, because the, the game itself was so groundbreaking in uh, the gaming industry. Yeah. Uh, we won about 100 Game of the Year awards. Yeah. I was nominated uh, for Best Performance. Uh, for, five uh, or six times, uh, wow. won, a, won a couple, even a BAFTA. I got to. How'd that feel? Oh, you know when you you hear those those uh, Oscar nominees that, yeah. didn't, that didn't win go. It's an honor to be just to be nominated. That's how I felt when I lost at the BAFTAs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it it really is being nominated mm-hmm. is winning. Oh, absolutely. It, it, it really is winning. You think uh, only five people in this whole world get nominated or something like yeah, that. It's yeah. a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. Five or, uh, I don't remember how many people were nominated. Five or six people a year. Yeah. Nominated for best vocal performance in a video game. And two years ago, I was one of them. Were you like? Were you super shocked, or were you kind of like, "Well, I can see where this is going," because you know, Walking Dead was really good. Well, you know, um, <laughs> I was on I was on quite a ride then from from the first 
episode that came out, the uh, video game uh, critics loved the game and they loved the voice acting. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed the first few times I read the articles, they talked about how much they loved the voice acting. They didn't mention any of the voice actors. So I started, you know, writing them like, hey, you know, uh, if you're going to talk about how much you like the, let me tell you, I play Lee Everett, and there's a whole bunch of other really fine actors in this thing that uh, you need to mention. The, the guy that plays Kenny, uh, Melissa, yeah, who yeah. plays Clementine. Yeah. I mean, you've you've just, Owen, you just have a bunch of great characters. As a matter of fact, it was a great cat. I had never done this before. Um, during uh, uh, episode three, I got the director to get as much of the cast together as possible. Mm -hmm. We recorded everything up in Fairfax, uh, California, and invited them to dinner. I had, you know, when you're working on video games, you always work by yourself. I had never done that before. Uh -huh. I just wanted to meet these fine That's actors cool. that were in this game uh, because I knew we were sharing something very special. And I just... It's that Telltale and, family. And, and, and I just wanted to, let me touch y'all, and y'all touch me, because <laughs> we're, we're a part of something different, oh, new, yeah. unique. And uh, uh, I have gained a lot of uh, friendships from that. I, oh, I, like the Telltale, obviously, like The Walking Dead really catapulted them to just... A crazy oh yeah! Group. Oh yeah! No, no Telltale went from being a you well, know, it's a gaming company to to, to being oh yeah, it's Telltale Games. Yes, you know I remember they had Back to the Future game, which was pretty yeah. cool. But now it's like oh my gosh! Every time Telltale's like we are gonna be in association with Game of Thrones or Marvel, everyone gets a super juice, super amped. So that's really cool. Um, that being said, I wanted to thank you so much for coming by. It is my pleasure. My oh, pleasure. You're, my you're, pleasure. you're even better in person. But I do have one request. I would like you to plug your Twitter, your Instagram, your YouTube, and where you're going to be. No, no, but, no. That was going to be my request. But, 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 in Lee Everett's voice. <laughs> Hi, this is Lee Everett. Uh, I'm looking for Clementine, but if you see her. Have her get in touch with me, at Dave Fenoy. I know, Lee Everett, at Dave Fenoy. Don't make no sense, but <laughs> that's how to do it. Or friend me on Facebook and let her know where I am. Or, or, or find my fan page on Facebook, Dave Fenoy Voice Actor. Because Dave Fenoy is Lee Everett. And Instagram, <laughs> Dave Fenoy. Okay? Thanks. Nice. Oh, there's a walker! Oh, no! Oh, Kenny! Kenny! Oh, Kenny! Come on, Kenny! Did you like Kenny? It's you know high, what? Uh, Kenny was my question. best friend and worst enemy all at, at the same time. He's very interesting. Very interesting character. Oh my gosh! Um, I, I get asked all the time. Besides Clementine, who's your favorite character in the Walking I Dead didn't ask game? That. <laughs> you didn't ask that. Uh, Kenny. Yeah. Kenny. Oh, I'm glad he made it to season two with her. Yeah, well, that goodness. was a surprise. What well, I mean, Kenny, he got there. Come on, bring yeah, the effort back. Yeah, it can happen with one arm or not, depending. <gasps> All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in here at The Voice Up at AfterBuzz TV. I am Koori Takei. You can follow me at K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S on Twitter as well as Instagram. And, of course, Dave Fenoy at various, various social media at Dave Fenoy. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, comment at AfterBuzz TV, and we'll catch you guys next time for some more talk. See ya! From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. <laughs>